going on in the world today. So much bad, you know. And on our Facebook ministry, I seen a message or a comment today about a man that fell off the roof and broke his back. He asked, why did God do this? Or why did he allow this to happen? Folks, that wasn't God allowing this to happen. It wasn't. Uh, don't ever blame God for the bad things that are going on. Because we as humans, we bring the bad stuff upon ourselves, really and honestly, and truthfully. Uh, good things do happen. I mean, bad things do happen to good people. Don't ever forget that. But we're going to see that, you know, I'm sure people have experienced loss, but the reason why I'm going to Job, the last chapter there, he experienced such a great loss, y'all. I mean, he lost everything. Every single thing he had besides his life. But I wanted to start here in First Peter and show you how you'll be able to move to take that victory that is waiting for you. To take that game that God wants to bless you with. In 1 Peter chapter 5, verse 1 says, The elders which are among you, I exhort, who am also, who am also an elder and witness of the sufferings of Christ and also a partaker of the glory that shall be revealed. Verse 2, Feed the flock of God which is among you. Now here's a commandment that we must do to be able to gain that victory. So many, so many people are not feeding the flock like they should. Amen. That's one thing I love about this church. It's one thing I love about Brother Jimmy. It's one thing I love about God's Word. There's so many layers in it. You can take it so many different ways and apply it to your life and make your life better. Amen. If you don't, it's your own fault. It's your own laziness. But we got to feed the flock of God which is among you, talking the oversight thereof, not by constraint, but willingly. Not for filthy lucre, but of ready mind. Neither as being lords over God's heritage, but being in samples to the flock. Amen. Being in samples. Example. you got to set the example. you got to set the godly example in feeding your flock. Not only you got to give them the word of God, but you got to let God's light shine through you. Amen. In everything that you do, whether it be work, whether whatever it is, it don't matter. you got to let God's light shine through you. And in doing so, you're going to feed His flock because they're going to say, hey, I want what He's got. Amen. I want what He's got. And what does He got? He has the Word of God in His mind and in His heart. He has the love of God in His mind and in His heart. And He wants to share that with each and every person. Or she wants to share that. It don't matter man, woman, child. You can shine the light of God. Amen. All right, carrying on with God's word here in verse 4. And when the chief shepherd, who's the chief shepherd? Jesus. Jesus Christ. Come, Lord, come. Hallelujah. When the chief shepherd shall appear, listen here now, ye shall receive a crown of glory that fadeth not away. Amen. That's what you get when you feed the flock. Amen. That's what you get, a crown of glory. A crown of glory. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Yes, all right, carrying on. Verse 5 here. Likewise, ye younger, submit yourself unto the elders. Yes. Yea, all of you be subject to one another and be clothed with humility. For God resisteth the proud and giveth grace to the humble. See, I, I really think right here too is where we went, gone, we went wrong as a nation. We become proud. Hey, look at us. We're doing good. We're getting huge. We're doing whatever we got to do. We become proud. And guess what? What was Satan's downfall? Pride. Pride. So always take that into account in the things that you do. I'm not saying be proud of what you're doing. I'm saying overly boasting. Thinking that you've done it yourself. Guess what? You didn't do it yourself. Philippians 4.13 says you can do all things with through Christ who strengthens you. Amen. Amen. You hear that? You can do all things through Christ. 
Not through your action, not through your words, but through Christ. Amen. And it says here, likewise, ye younger, submit yourself unto the elders. This don't mean for the elders to be overbearing to the young ones. Amen. You know, you gotta you gotta nurture them, you gotta grow them. Amen. You, know, you plant the seed, God gives the growth. Yes. And and a lot of times you do have to be harsh on them. But it's not meaning here that you have to be let them be overbearing to you, youngins. No, that's not what that means. What that means, submit yourself unto the elder, means submit yourself unto someone who has the knowledge of the Word Amen. of God. And if you're doing that right there, you're going to learn, you're going to grow, you're going to be successful. Yes, there's temptations. Yes, there's trials going to continue to be in your life. But guess what? You're promised the victory. The Lord goes with you. He walks with you through that fire. He brings you out to the other side. You want Him to smell like smoke. Hallelujah. Amen. 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 You will not smell like smoke, but you went through the fire. Why? Because the Savior has told you through there. When you don't think you can walk, He will carry you. But you got to love Him. All right, verse 6 here. These next few verses are some of my favorite in the Bible. Actually, they're all my favorite. <laughs> But these are some ones that just really sticking out to me today. It says, verse 6, Humble yourselves, therefore, under the mighty hand of God, that He may exalt you in due time. Verse 7, listen here, brothers and sisters. Verse 7, casting all, underline that in your Bibles, casting all of your cares upon Him, for He cared for you. Thank you. Satan don't care for you. The only thing he cares about is bringing as many as he can to damnation. Because why? He's always he's already sentenced to death. And he wants to take each and every one he can with him. But here's how you get rid of that old devil here. Verse 8. Be sober. Be vigilant. Because your adversary the devil as a roaring lion walketh around about Seeking whom he may devour. Now I want to go back to the verse part, uh, first part of this verse. Be sober. This is a couple different meanings here. One, don't give in to strong drink or drugs. You got to be sober. Two, be sober. Don't let people plant seeds of the enemy in your mind. Don't let people sway you away from God's Word. Amen. you got to be sober. In that, you're being vigilant. You're studying God's Word. Amen. Stay in God's Word. That's our only protection, folks. If we be sober and vigilant in God's will, we allow God's will to be what it is and what it's going to be. And in doing that, we ain't got to worry about that devil walking around as a roaring lion. Because guess what? we got the 40, 4570 Magnum that we can shoot him away with. And what is that? That's God's word. It is the weapon that we use. Verse 9. Who resists steadfast in the faith, knowing that the same afflictions are accomplished in your brethren that are in the world. But God, but the God of all grace. What is grace? Unmerited favor. We don't deserve it. But guess what? He gives it for those who love him. Who hath called us unto his eternal glory by Christ Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus. After that ye have suffered a while, listen here, after you have suffered suffered a while, make you perfect. Establish, strengthen, settle you. And I said I was going to stop there at verse 10, but I'm going to go ahead and read verse 11 to finish up this paragraph. To him be glory and dominion forever and ever. Amen. 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 Get an amen. Thank you, Lord. Now let's go to Job here. I'm going to recap you on old Job here, man. Uh, he was one of God's devout servants. And Satan come up and asks, God, what about your servant Job? He asked God about it. He wanted to tempt him. Guess what? God allowed that to happen. Old Job was a good person. He was. He really was. 
bad things happen to him. You read the book of Job, he lost everything. He lost his home, he lost his family, he lost his livestock, his livelihood. He was diseased. The reason why he stayed in that state, folks, listen. The reason why he stayed in that state, he wasn't being sober or minded. He was letting his family, his friends, he was letting them talk him into trying to curse God for that. And guess what? It wasn't God. It was Satan. Amen. It was Satan throwing them stumbling blocks. It was Satan throwing them darts. And Job give ear to all these ungodly people. He give ear to them. He wasn't being sober minded. Amen. He knew what God wanted. He knew that God would protect him and be with him. But he was letting them put them little seeds of doubt, seeds of fear, seeds of loneliness in his ear. He was giving him them ear. So, folks, you know we got to be careful. We got to be careful who we're getting advice from. We got to be careful that they're not trying to sway us away from God's will. Amen. We got to be in God's will because guess what? God's will is going to be if it's well with your soul. Great. If not, great. I mean, it's going to be what it is. God, God is ruler of all. But until the moment that Job realized that and turned his face back to God, he was continually, continuously tempted and tried. Trials and tribulations. What's going on in the world today? We're being tried. We're being tempted. We've got a plague that we ourselves, not the ones that love God, but we as a whole, brought on ourselves. And I hear people blaming God for that. And I just shake my head. It's not God. It's our doings. Yeah. It's what we did. Yeah. It's what we are doing. We're not doing what we're called to do. And that's to spread God's love, which <coughs> is God's Word. Yeah. But in Job 42, let's see what happens here when one of God's children turn their face to Him and <coughs> repent. Chapter 42 of Job, verse 1. Then Job answered the Lord and said, I know that thou canst do everything, and that, that, and that no thought can be withholden from thee. That's right. God can do anything. Uh -huh. Because He created us. But you know what? He loves us. He really does. In Romans chapter 5, verse 8. Even yet, while we were still sinners, God commanded His love upon us. While we were still sinners, He commanded His love upon us. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. He sent He sent His Son on that cross to die for us. And in doing that, we have salvation. But let's continue on here with Job of what's happened to him when he's finally turned his face back to God and realized what the problem was. Verse 3, Who is he that hideth counsel without knowledge? Therefore have I uttered that I understand not. Things too wonderful for me which I knew not. Here I beseech thee, and I will speak. I will demand of thee, and declare thy unto me. I have heard of thee by hearing of the ear, but now my eyes seeth thee. Wherefore I bore myself, listen here, I bore myself and repent in dust and ashes. He's done the magical thing right here. He's repented. He has changed his way of thinking. He has lended his ear to God. He has lended his heart to God that God may exhort him in due time. And he has. We're going to see later on in this chapter what them blessings can be. Now, Job, like I said before, he done lost everything. He was one of the most wealthiest men. He had a great family. He had a great home. He had great livestock. He, he had everything. All right, here we go. Continuing on. Verse 7. And it was so that after the Lord had spoken these words unto Job, the Lord said unto Eliphaz the Temanite, My wrath is kindled against thee and against thy two friends, for ye have not spoken of me. The things that is right, as my servant Job 
Hey. So you're, we also got to remember that it is our job as well to spread the love of God. To tell of God's works that are right, the righteous. All God does is righteous. It's right. Amen. We have to relay that to people as well in their time of suffering, in their time of loss, in their time of need, in their time of trials and temptations. We as Christians need not be like these two friends and Eliphaz. We don't need to be like them. Don't give your opinion. Go to the Holy Word and give God's opinion. Amen. Don't give your opinion. Because your opinion is like tinkling brass. It's just a sound. But when you when you counsel with this right here, when you counsel with God's love, with God's will, something's going to happen. Amen. And I promise you that is something's going to happen. I've done seen it several times. Seen many miracles. Seen many turnarounds happen. Because guess what? They turn their face to God. They turn their heart to God. All right, here we go. It says, Therefore take unto you now seven bullocks and seven rounds and go, go to my servant Job and offer up for yourselves a burnt offering and my servant Job shall pray for you. For him will I accept lest I deal with you after your folly and that ye have not spoken of me the things which is right like my servant Job. See here, another thing we have a problem with as humans, we have a problem with wanting to get revenge all the time. We want to get revenge. We want to do it ourselves. It just told you right here, if you love God, you are His servant. What happened there to the friends that misled Job? The wrath of God was kindled against them. That's one thing I don't want. I don't want to see nobody have the wrath of God kindled on him. Because you know what? That's something that, you know, I don't even want to think about myself. We've seen what happened when the wrath of God kindled against Sodom and Gomorrah. <laughs> Folks, I warn you, what's going on in this nation today? Same thing that Sodom and Gomorrah was happening. Amen. What happened then? They got raised to the ground. Same thing. Homosexuality, pedophilia, drug use running rampant. Whores, all that stuff. Sexual immorality, premarital sex, all that stuff is going on, running rapid in this world today. We wonder why there's a plague upon us. Amen. People want to know why? Get in God's Word. Search Scott, Sodom and Gomorrah and see what happened to them. Guess what? This is just a warning, folks. This ain't the end. This is just a warning. Worst things could come. But getting back on subject, I'm sorry, I've got a little side noted on that one. But getting back on subject, we're fixing to see, as you've seen here, the Lord done told Eliphaz and his friends to take him livestock. So here you see Job starting to get blessed. He's starting to get blessed. All right, verse 9. So Eliphaz the Temanite and Bildad the Shuhite and Zophar the Naamanite went and did according to the Lord commanded them. The Lord also accepted Job. Now these next few verses are where I come to and why I wanted to come to this chapter. Verse 10. And the Lord turned the captivity of Job when he prayed for his friends. Also the Lord gave Job twice as much as he had before. Amen. Folks, you see that? You see what happened there? Job prayed for the ones that misled him. What kind of heart is that? Is that not a heart like Christ? Because look what they did to him. Guess what he did when he was hanging up on that cross? Losing all of his blood in that pain and anguish. He prayed for us. He prayed for us. He prayed for us. The ones that said, crucify him. That could come from my very mouth. And when my actions and my words ain't right, guess what? It still does. It hurts the Lord. It hurts God. 
So folks, if we want to take care of the problems that we have in our life, let's not question God. Like that song, Broken Halos. Don't ask Jesus why. You already know why. When them trials and temptations come, God didn't do it. Satan did. But God allowed this because He's going to give you a test. He wants to know if you're worthy. If you will accept Him. If you will shine His light for Him. He wants to know that. So, you're going to have trials and temptations. But don't let somebody that is ungodly come unto you saying this and that and the other. And when you know it's wrong, and lend an ear to them. Stop them in their tracks. Lend your ear and lend your heart to God. It says here, God blessed Job twice as much as what he had. Amen. I'm going to tell you right now, I'm going to live an example of that. I'm a living example of that. And I turned my face, when I was a kid, I was on fire for God. For my teenage years, I was. I was really on fire for God. And then guess what? And I said, I don't need God. I can do it myself. And guess what? That removed God's hand of protection. I ended up in jail. I ended up on drugs. I ended up on alcohol. I ended up not having nobody around me. My, fr my friends were gone. My family was gone. They didn't trust me. I don't blame them. I was horrible. Why? Because I knew God's truth. I knew the love that He had. I knew what I was supposed to do. But guess what? I didn't do it. So guess what? I got thrown in jail. And that jail cell opened my eyes. When it opened my eyes, there's something better. Folks, I'm going to tell you right now, there's something better. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. It can't get no better than that. Amen. The Lord Jesus Christ died for you and me. But getting back on point, don't stay in that mire, y'all. Don't let nobody tell you you have to stay there. You got evidence of old Job here. He lost everything he had. And then he turned to God and started praising God. He got blessed with twice as much as he had. He was already rich. He lost everything, but he gained twice as much back. Let's go ahead and continue this chapter. Then came there unto him all his brethren and all his sisters and all that they had been of his acquaintance before and did eat bread with him in his house. And they uh, bemoaned him and confront, comforted him over all the evil that the Lord had brought upon him. Every man also gave him a piece of money and every one an earring of gold. So the Lord blessed the latter end of Job more than the beginning. For he had 14,000 sheep, 6,000 camels, and a 1,000 yoke of oxen, and a 1,000 she-asses. You know, in the beginning, you know, he lost his family, all his children. He also had seven sons and three daughters. He blessed Job. And right now, I want to I wanna speak that blessing on each and every one that's listening today. I'll give you the way. Well, no, I'm sorry. <clears throat> Forgive me, Lord. The Lord has given you the way. Amen. I'm urging you to it. My words are of God. These are not my words. Folks, let's turn our faces back toward God. Let's look to things that are above. Let's not look at this worldly stuff going on. Because guess what? That's just Satan throwing in those seeds of doubt on you. This is foretold in the Bible. This pandemic, plague, aka COVID. This is laid out in the Bible. And it tells you why that it's been brought upon us. It's been brought upon us because we have turned our face from God. Amen. We have accepted not His will, but the will of Satan. Folks, let's shine our lights. Let's shine our Christian lights. Let's show the love that we have. Sometimes the love that we have <laughs> must be correction. <clears throat> but let's do it with love. Let's do it with God's Word. Amen. Let's do it with the glory of God. Because that's what we're going to do. We're going to give Him the glory by shining His light and bringing His soul to Him. 
Folks, God and I love you. I want to see each and every one of us do good. Don't be weary in doing good because guess what? All good things come from who? God. God. Amen. Can I get an amen on that? Amen.